Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to deal with the dreaded formula.firewall error issue. This is a common error we get when we try to share Power Query files with other users. So let's get into it. Let's get into our use case or our example. Now say for example we have Carrie over here on the right and she's working with Babs. They're working on the same project and they are working on a data file and that's supposed to be a very huge file. So Carrie is the one who's the power user and she puts together a data set and it's a large file so it doesn't make sense to send it back and forth between each other. So this is a static file. Carrie's got a copy of it. Babs has the, the same copy of it. Now Carrie does her analysis and that's going to reference her static copy of the data file. And with this analysis file, she's going to send it over to Babs and she's going to configure it to look in the directory path where Babs has her data file. So she sends it over to Babs and to view the analysis and all she does, all she tells Babs to do is change the directory path before refreshing it. So Babs gets the analysis file, opens up that file, which is the Power Query file, has the Power Query parameters in there and changes directory path to it and she's going to get this error, the formula, the firewall error. So she opened up the file and she's got the far formula, the firewall issue. And one of the f easiest fixes is to change the privacy settings. And even they're on the same company, so it might not be too hard to do. But let's say that she's paranoid. Babs is paranoid. She doesn't want to change any of her privacy settings on Excel. So how can we change this to make it where she doesn't have to do anything to change privacy settings? Well, there's another way to do it. And all, she, all Carrie needs to do is reconfigure some of the query steps. And let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to take the perspective first of Carrie. And we, we have Carrie with the analysis file and the data file on her local drive. And later on, I'll take the, the perspective of Babs where she will have the same thing. So I can't be two people at the same time, so I'm trying to simulate their environment by moving these two files over there and see what how we can take care of this. So let's pretend first we're in the perspective of Carrie and we're opening up the analysis file, do some changes. And it's pulling off the data file here and it should work fine. So here I'm in Excel. Uh, my path name, this is the path that I'm going to pull that data from. And here's my queries. Let me open up the query that I have. It's pulling from this path and then the data file. And I have another video that actually covers sharing. That one goes into the steps to do that create this particular way that we can share files. And this particular video talks about the form of that firewall issue, but I'll add a link on this video back to that one so you know how to do this. Basically, we're just creating a parameter path to look at that file. And all it's going to do is, all this particular uh, steps do is look at that file and then we're going to change some filter rows. Let's just change the filter row here in this example. Change it to accounting. We change that to accounting, close and load. And this business development table becomes an accounting load. And then this is something we send over to Babs. Well, so let's send it over. So here I am, and let's take the perspective now of Babs. There is no items under this documents folder of carries. There shouldn't even be a, a, a folder path here. But just to show the example, since this is on one computer, Let's pretend that um, this doesn't exist. Everything's here under the documents folder for Babs. I will open up the analysis file. So here we have the open file. We're taking Babs perspective and we're told to change this. So it's pointing to the correct folder where the data file is and it's under Babs. And when we do a data refresh, we're going to get an error because it can't find it. Uh, let's bring up the Power Query. It's going to say, oh, references to other query steps. You can't access it. Please rebuild it. So if we go into the queries and open, oh, hover over this, we'll see that formula firewall issue. So as I've mentioned before, we, we can go the route where we ask Babs to go and change her settings, her privacy settings, and it will work, right? So if we change the privacy settings, take that to ignore, click OK, and then refresh, it's going to pull it in just fine. Well. Babs doesn't want to do that, right? She wants to have no privacy settings changed because she doesn't trust any of these things here. So if we want to do that, click OK and have it go back. What we need to do is kind of change and add a, another table. 
uh, I'll call this a bridging table. If you read Ken Pulse's article, they, he's calling it staging tables. And what we need to do is create a kind of intermediary query to reference the path here. What we can do is go to get data from file, or actually from other sources, and do a blank query. And under this blank query, we're going to enter some M code. Go to the advanced editor and enter M code. We need the source, so that'll be our second step. So our first step, we're just going to define the path. All right, so the path is going to equal, or that step name, we're going to call that one path. That's going to equal Excel.current workbook. Double click that, click that. Uh, open parentheses, close parentheses, that's fine. And what we're going to do is, in the current workbook, we want to look for an object called parameters. And I should have shown you what it was called first, so let's cancel out of this. Let me show you what we're going to look for. Discard this. Close this. One thing to take note of is these tables are objects, right? And they have names to it. This, this table is an object that has a name. So if I go under uh, formulas, name manager, you'll see that there are names to these files, right? So this particular file, this particular table here is called parameter. This table, accounting, this one's called table one. So just make note of that table name, parameter. That's what we're going to add into our M code later on. So by default, when you create tables, Excel just gives a generic name like table one, table two. You can identify, you can identify a range and give it a name. So you see as I selected this table, we have that parameter name there. So let's build another query. Go to data, get data, and from other sources, blank query. We're going to go into the advanced editor and enter two lines of M code. Click the advanced editor. My first line, I'm going to call that source path. Press enter. And path is going to equal, so that first step, the first step, that name, path, type excel.current workbook, this current workbook, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then we're going to have that name of the object. So there's a couple of, ob there's a couple of objects that have names, right? Table one, and the other object that we're going to pull from is called parameters. So curly brackets, square brackets, name equals open quotes parameters. And then we're going to look at the content of that object. And we want the first row, which is row zero of that table. And then the column one, the column name is called path name. So you admit you had seen it first. Path name was the name of the column. That first line, comma, the second line, source, delete that. We want Excel.workbook, so we want to pull in the contents of a workbook. Double click that or click that. Open parentheses. And we want to get file contents. So file contents is another M code function. Click on that. The file contents. Now we're going to pull in that path name, path. So we're going to append what we got out of this step with the actual file name. And that'll be the file name of our data file, slash data.xlsx. And, and after that comma, no. And there's an explanation out there, an article that talks about the delay in terms of having the speed of the lookup or speed of bringing back the data uh, more efficiently. And they definitely know more than I could, so I'm not going to describe what it actually does, but we have this null and then true here. And we have no syntax errors. Click done. And it couldn't find my table name parameters. Oh, I think I just named it parameter. Let's, let's get rid of the S there. Delete that. Press enter. And now it did find it. So you see the first step here? It is going to look at that parameter table, look at the contents what is in the first row and take it in the first row and that column name path name and pull out that. Our second step is it's going to append that path name and that data to get the table. So this is the actual binary of the data worksheet. So it's pulling in all this other stuff. Now this is something now we can use. I'll call this bridge. We can use this particular query as a bridge query to our original query. Open up my queries pane here. 
and this table here, instead of it having this particular source as a step, we'll just call it bridge. Oops, delete that. Select, select this and type bridge. And now it's brought it in. Now we don't need this path query anymore. Right click, delete that. And now it works. So go to home, click close and load, and we have our table here. All right? Actually, we don't need this bridge table to put it into another sheet. Right click, load to, this is just a connection. Click OK, click OK, and we have, go back to our sheet here where it updated. Let's go and update it and change another filter instead of accounting. Double click here, and let's change it to something else. Go down to our filter rows. Well, let's say we change it to engineering. Click OK. We have engineering data now. Click close and load. Now this should refresh to engineering data. So that's how we can share Power Query files with maybe uh, a less sophisticated user. All we need to do is ask them to update the path there. And if they didn't want to change their privacy settings, of course, we would have to create a bridge query to do that so it doesn't get that formula.firewall issue. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.